All right, ready for another great day of formal methods. I just handed back some homework, but I think since there's no homework due today, you probably don't have any questions about the homework that's due next time because I doubt if anybody has tried it. Hi, <laughs> <I> Ashley. <laughs> Okay, today we are going to start chapter 5, and chapter 5 is, is about verifying English arguments. Verifying English <laughs> yeah, they we're actually going to do something in, in English, <laughs> not just plain math. Okay, so here's the objective of this chapter. These are all word problems. You know, in algebra, most people hate word problems because, oh, how do you, once you get the word problem all set up, then you can do the algebra to solve it. It's the same kind of thing. These are word problems. But now, here's what we're going to do in this chapter. We are going to determine whether or not an argument is a valid argument. You know, like if you, like if you are in some discussion with some person who has a different opinion on some topic and you get into an argument and you try to convince them, your opponent using uh, logic, and, the, and he says, well, but if this is true and this is true, then that, then that, and blah, 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 blah. And you say, wait, wait, wait a minute, that's not a valid argument. You know, you might, you might be able to, to to catch your opponent in, in, in a chain of reasoning that really isn't a valid chain of reasoning. So the purpose of this is for us to show how to determine whether a, an argument is a, is a valid argument, whether it's, you know, whether it is, it's, lo it's logically sound. Yeah, valid means true, yeah, that's right, valid does mean true in all states. So we want to, so that, that's the objective. And what we're, the way we're going to do this is we're going to go through a bunch of cases, uh, case studies uh, in this chapter. Uh, and I've reproduced the first one here on the slide. And so, here's an ar so here is, here is a, a statement. This, it's 5.1 in the book. This is all in the book, so you don't need to copy all of this stuff down. Okay, so it so here's the first here is here is a logical argument that a person is making. If Joe fails to submit a project in course CS414, that's computer science 414. If he fails to submit a uh, a project, then he fails the course. So that's first statement. Second statement. If Joe fails CS414, then he cannot graduate. Hence, if Joe graduates, he must have submitted a project. I think someone's trying to get in. Oh, there we go. V-A-L-I-D. Oh, you don't think that's a valid argument? You, it doesn't sound right? Oh, that's interesting. Oh, do you, do you, think, do you think the reasoning... He submitted all projects. No. If he graduates, yeah, he must have submitted at least one project. Wait. If Joe fails, fails to submit a project in course CS414, so there's any one project then, well, I mean, I guess we're assuming there's one project. But there's one project. We're in. also assuming that he does graduate, which means he had to have submitted a project. Right. Well, hence, yeah. He had to have submitted all the projects. Assuming there's one project. That's true. Assuming there's one project. Yeah. yeah he, even if then, then, he no. still did all the projects. But is, is this, yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, we're getting, yeah, actually, this is a good discussion because we're, you know, there's a lot of, oh, what about this? We're assuming this, what? Okay, so, so here's what we want to do. What we want to do is we want to nail this down, and we want to be able to prove formally that this is, in fact, a valid argument. All right, S implies F. So it's. So yeah, so now what we need to do is we need to, an let, so let's go through and let's analyze this argument and see if we can agree whether or not it's a valid argument. Are you with me? Okay. Okay, so as we've done before, what we do is we assign a letter, which is, you know, a variable for each particular phrase in the discussion. So what we have here is it's, it's talking about uh, 
Joe submitting a project, okay? So let's let the letter S be Joe submits a project in CS414. And then we have another thing, it says, then he fails the course. So failing the course, so there's Joe fails the course, CS414. Let's have that be the letter F, yeah? And then there's another thing about him graduating. There's something about him graduating. Okay, so G for Joe graduate. So now we have these letters, S, F, and G. Okay, so now here's what I'm... Well, yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, so here is 5.1 a valid argument. So I'll tell you what let's do. Let's, let's identify each one of these uh, statements that are made in the argument. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll label these F0. F stands for fact. So tell me, what is that? How do we write that first fact? The fact in the first statement. Good. Not, what you said, not S implies F. Well, that's the first fact. That's the first fact. Now, now what's the second fact? Um, F implies not G. If he fails and he cannot graduate, F so implies not G. So F implies not G. Good. Is everybody, yeah. is everybody following this? <coughs> okay. And, and now, and now what is the conclusion? It, because here it says hence, okay? So C is, C is the conclusion. No matter, but now what is the conclusion? G implies, G implies S. G implies S. Yeah, the first two end parentheses have an and between them, and it equal bills C. Does it equal? Oh, that was, yeah, he said yes, the first one's in parentheses, and then and between them. And you, and you say that equal bills C? Yeah. A, a close, but no cigar. It's, it yeah, because, yeah. It I, it's implies. Do you see? That's what the hints mean. That's interesting. You mean like in a proof? Hints means conclusion. Hints is like therefore. Oh, hints. H e n c e. I thought you h i n t s. Hints. Oh, hey, that sounds just as exactly hints. Hints. That that's, uh, that sounds exactly the same, doesn't it? Yeah, so what is, what is the, so here, let's write down what the argument is. The argument, the argument is F, the first fact, and the second fact implies the conclusion. Now, as it turns out, practically all English arguments are of this form. You say, well, if this is true, blah, 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 and then you say, make another statement, well, blah, 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 and we know, blah, 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 blah. And so you say, therefore, it must follow that blah, 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 blah. You know, you see what I'm saying? You, you try to get people to agree on each one of your, of your facts. facts, you know, that you say, if we can agree on this, we can agree on it. Well, then it, follow, it has to follow this, right? So that's, that's, this is the structure of most English arguments. So, let, so putting this in, so what do we have? We have what? We have parentheses, not S implies F. And parentheses, F implies not G. And this whole thing does what? Implies what? G implies S. This is really, this is really what that is saying. Yeah? So, my question then is, how do we prove that this is a valid argument? What? Yeah, if this is a theorem, if we, yeah, if we, if this, then we've shown that it's a valid argument. Yeah? Case analysis. <laughs> yeah, you want to do case analysis. See, I, I, every time I show case analysis, people want to do case analysis. No, I don't think we can. I don't think we can do better than that. Come on. Yeah, too much writing, too much, yeah, true, false, false, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so, how do you want to do this? Well, no, let's not assume the Because look, I mean, doesn't something look familiar here? I mean, well, I mean, look, I mean. Let's do five nines. Well, look, here you have this F and, I mean. It looks like 4.1. I don't think so. But not S implies not D. 
I think I think what we should do is we should start with the left left hand side and get it to imply the right hand side, right? Oh, yeah. Sounds like a plan. Okay. So here's the proof. So the proof is this. We'll start with the left hand side. Not S implies F and F implies not G. So does anybody have any get your get your <laughs> get your what? <laughs> Your game face. <laughs> so get out your come on, get out your tools. Your Can I use that? Can we have you you want to use want to borrow one? Yeah. Okay. Here you go. Thank you. Sure. Yeah, it does look like some kind of transitivity thing, right? If P, what, what, which one is that? Three eighty two A. Three eighty, and so. But now, so what does that, does this equal veil by 382A? Yeah. No, well, uh, basically, well, like, the whole thing, the whole argument looks like 382A. Yeah, so this yeah. imply, this implies by 382A. But 382A has equal veils, no. Oh, does it? Yeah. No, that's good. That 382.1 only has implies. Oh, A. Yeah, you're right. Are we good on this? Okay. Are, are, okay. So 382A, so this implies what? Um, would make it not S implies not G. Correct. This would make it not S implies not G. Ah, so we had something about a contrapositive. What, and what does this do? This... This, yeah. So what? Yeah. So what? So what? What goes here? Yeah, but what goes here? Equals by contrapositive, which is what? Three point sixty one contrapositive. And which is which makes it what? G implies S. And that's and so we showed that this implies this. So so what is our conclusion? Assuming that there won't be No, 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 no. Hold on, hold on. What is is our conclusion that Joe graduated? Yes or no? Is that our conclusion that no. Joe graduated? No. no. We don't know if he submitted a project. Yeah. So our conclusion is not that Joe graduated. What is our conclusion? That yeah, our conclusion is that this is a valid argument. Given well, yeah. Okay, now does everybody understand what we're showing? We're not showing that Joe graduates. We're showing that this is a valid argument. Yeah? But I care about Joe. <laughs> well, we care about everybody, right? Okay. All right. So here's another one. Uh, how about this one? <laughs> okay, so what does this one say? What, what do you think about this argument? If x is what is is greater th is greater than zero, then if y is greater than zero, then no wait, z is zero. Sorry, if x is greater than zero, then if y is zero, then z is zero. Variable y is zero. Hence, either x is greater than zero or z is zero. <laughs> well, uh, so this argument consists of two facts and a conclusion drawn from them. We begin formalizing the argument by associating identifiers. Okay, so x, little x is x is greater than zero, okay? Little y is y is zero, and little z is z is zero. Okay, so now, can you, try, okay, so now here I want you to write down if, pop quiz, okay? Then if. Pop, pop quiz, write down that argument with those letters. Go ahead and do it. I want to see, I want, I want to see you do this.
finished. I want I want to see. Uh, you want us to write down? Yeah, I want you to write down what you think. What what is what is the Boolean expression for this argument? And it looks like there's going to be what? How many facts does it look like? Three. Two. Well, two two facts and a conclusion, right? Oh yeah. yeah. Okay, so I want you to write. I want go ahead and write it down. All the, and you guys who are watching this in video, you <laughs> expect you to be writing this down. <laughs> well, I mean, we're going to find out if it makes sense. We, we, we want to find out if this, law, if this is a valid argument. Okay, so what, how'd you do? Oh, you haven't written it down yet. Oh, come on, come on. Time's a waste and get this written down. Oh, either. Either. Either x is greater than zero or z is zero. And we will assume or both. You know, we'll use our or, you know. This little y, y. little y is, y is zero. Well, I want you to write down, I want to see what you wrote. Okay, so do you have something? So you have this, and so what would, it would be this and this implies this. Yeah. Okay, what'd you get? This and this implies Ah, uh, your last one, you have an and there? Or, my bad. Yeah, yeah. Did, what did you get? You're still working on it? Yeah. You, you think you have something? Kyle, you got? What do you think, Mason? Uh, the first one I put, X implies parentheses Y implies Z. Okay, sure At, right. okay so X implies Parentheses or parentheses y implies z. Did you get that? What? Because there's two ifs. X. Yeah. That's what I yeah. That that looks right. All right. Yeah. So it's if x is greater than zero. So there's your little x. Then so it's x implies parentheses. Parentheses. Then if y is zero, then zero zero. So parentheses. Y implies Z, right? Yep. And then the other fact is y. variable Y is zero, so that's Y, so that's and Y, and then, and then the, and then that whole thing implies what? X or Z. Yeah. Okay. So is this what you got? Yep. X implies Y implies Z, and Y implies X or Z. Nailed it. Good. All right, so we, are, we, are we starting to get this language? Yeah. Okay, so how do we show that this is a valid argument? Let's prove this. Well, okay, well, let's prove it. Okay, so here we go. Well, shall we do what, like what we did before and try, start with the left and try to get it to the right? Because, yeah. I mean, after all, we have an X. An X implies with a Y implies. I think we can do some, do some of our uh, equation sheet formulas on that, right? So here we go. Let's go X implies... X implies Y implies Z and Y. What do you think? This, uh, let's do, do we have a, do we have a? Yeah, I like strengthening. Can we do strengthening? We can get rid of the Y. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Oh, okay. So, oh, we can get rid of the Y. Oh, and we want to show that this implies X or Z. We don't need Y. Yeah, that's right. So we don't need Y. Oh, so does this... Does this implies the first one, right? Yeah. By strengthening, okay. Yeah. So this this implies by strengthening, which is uh, what was that? It was it A or B? I think that was the A. B. Oh, that was B. We screwed that up. Oh, that okay. Three what? Three seven six B. Three seven six B. So this implies, and now we don't need this outer brand, right? So this is X implies. Y implies. This is 4.1. Not really. 
Okay. And now what do we need to get this to? X or Z. I have a question. Yeah? When you're like trying to get that one set here, we start with left side and we're trying to apply the next side. Can we have another implies there? Oh yeah. But you just cannot have a follows from. What if, you have if you have more than one implies, if you have more than one implies, that's legal. All right. But you cannot have an implies and then a follows from. What if you have an implies, a follows from, and then another implies? No, 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 no. You can't have a follows from at all. If you have a follows from anywhere in that chain, then all bets are it's off. Just equals implies. So, yes. But if you don't have any implies, can you use follows from as much as you want? Yes, but then, you're, then the first one would follow from the last one. Sure. If you had a bunch of follows from and equals, then the first one would follow from the last one. But you cannot mix. What you can't do, look, if you know that A is greater than B, and you know that B is less than C, you don't know anything about A and C. Right. The same way with implies. Okay. It's always in one direction. Okay. Okay, okay now what? 3.59. Three, 3.59? Let's do 365 three, 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 in the new strengthening again. What is 365? Is that shunting? Yeah. I like 5.9. Yeah. We can use shunting and then strengthening again. Oh, no, yeah, shunting would be good. Okay, you, you think shunting? Okay, yeah, so shunting, shunting, which is what? 365. Yeah. And what does that tell you? Isn't this like an X and Y? Um, Doesn't the shunting do the and? Yeah, X, X and Y implies Z, and then yeah. remove the Y with another strengthening. Like well, but, I mean, we can't remove a Y from this whole thing. I mean... Why not? Oh. We don't have a monotonicity yeah. um, with implies. Uh, that's going to fail. Why can't we do it? Because we don't have a monotonicity with implies. Last time we didn't have the implies Z on the end. We just had the, the X and Y. Yeah, if we just had an X and Y, that would imply the X. Yeah. But, we have, but it's, it's involved with this. Yeah, so what are we going to do? Maybe. Um, maybe not but does it and have that. a higher precedence than implies? Yeah, but the whole thing, you can't just willy nilly take out one thing of this whole thing with this implies and say that, yeah. and say that it. it yeah, we don't have a theorem that lets us do this with, when it's embedded in a. Exactly. You see what I mean saying? It makes sense you could just drop one. See, well, I mean, look. This is, it, what you're trying to do is you're trying to do something that monotonicity lets you do when it's just a single conjunction or disjunction, mm -hmm. if you see what I'm saying. So, yeah, I don't actually, you know, what's going on here? How can we, maybe, no, you want to try 359 and maybe then, we, then we'll get, maybe if we get rid of this, because what are we trying to get this to? X or. We're trying to get this without, maybe we need to eliminate this. Maybe 359? Not. Not X and Y. No, not X or not Y. So it's not this or this, right? Yeah. Not, so this would be not X and Y or Z. Z? Yeah. Not X or not Y. Oh, so De Morgan maybe? Yeah. Um, not X and not Y. Not X or not Y. Not X or not Y or Z. Oh, no, we can do that fourth then. But now. X or. But wait a minute, this is a not X. Hey, wait a minute. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Not valid. Oh. Not valid. Yeah, this is starting to look suspicious. Yeah? I never thought it was valid. The <laughs> <laughs> yeah, here's the price. So here we, here's, this, okay, starting, starting to look Suspicious. Suspicious. How do you spell suspicious? <laughs> suspicious. C I O U S. No, I after the C. Suspicious. 
Yeah. No, that doesn't look right. That's it. Is that right? <laughs> spell check. <laughs> we need a, I need a spell check on the blackboard. Whoa. Uh oh. You know. So, what's the problem? We might not know if this is valid or not. Okay, it looks suspicious. How do you find, how do you prove it's Yes, that was a really good, okay, and now we come to case the next, analysis. yeah, no, no, not case analysis. case analysis. No, 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 we don't do case analysis. Here's what we do. Well, case analysis would be, case analysis would be overkill. Case analysis would be overkill. So here's what we, so the question is, if you suspect that it's not valid, then it only takes one, what? One counter example one state to show that it's not true, and then you'll show that it's not valid, because in order to, for it to be valid, it has to be true in what? All, All states. states. So if you can come up with just one state, okay, so here's, here's the thing. Now, does what we end up with in the proof help us find out what state we need to It prove? might. No, because we start with one state the other side. So, yeah. so here's the question. If we, so can you find a counterexample? Uh, our original one was x implies y implies z. x implies y implies z um, and y. Wait. x implies y implies z. Print here. And y implies x or z. <coughs> now, now here, so now here we have to search, not, now what we're going to do is we're going to search for a counterexample. So what if x and z are false? x and z are false, y is true. So it, yeah, in order, f in order for this to be, in order for this to be a counterexample, you have to have what? Something, we have to make this whole thing false. We have to find a state for which, it, for, in order for this whole thing to be false, what, what do you have to have? False. That's the only way you can do it, right. is if you have this, the antecedent be true and the consequent be false. So that means x and z has to be false. That means that x and z oh, both have to be false, because if one of them are true, then the consequent. Are you with me? Okay, so here we, so, so here, let's, let's, so let's, so let's have, um, so the state would be x true, and then what, and uh, y, no wait, x z, is false. oh sorry, sorry, uh, yeah, it has to be false. So the counterexample would be x false, uh, z false, all right, and now this whole thing has to be true, right? Well, well, y has to be true because if y is, is not true, then you'd have false implies false, right? But we need to have true implies false. Are you with me? Yeah. So we have to have, we have to try um, y is true, okay? But now let's trace through and see if that's what we have. Okay, so basically what we're saying here is, is false implies True, true implies false. Hold on. True implies false. Are you with me? True implies false. And true implies false or false. If y was false, then it wouldn't work. So t implies false, then you wouldn't be able to know anything. So you have to have it as true. F implies. It, hold on. Did, does everybody, does everybody, did I, did I assign the states correctly to this? Yes. Okay. So, so, so now, so now what is this one? This true implies false is what? False implies false. Yeah, that's false, right? And then, and then false implies false is what? Yeah, that's true. And then, True and true is what? True. That's true. Yeah. And false or false is false. 
And then true implies false is what? False. So this whole thing. <laughs> well, I wouldn't have put it in quite that this term. <laughs> But it is false. So this is a count. So basically, what we have is. So what is this called? This is called a counterexample. All right. Now here's the thing. When you search for a counterexample, so here, here our, our author has a nice little table here. It's uh, counterexamples for expressions. So you know, if you have it's this table 5.1 in the book. So if you have P and Q, then if you want to show, in a, the only way that P and, well, in order for P and Q to be false, you can either have, you can either try P being false and you don't care what Q is, or you can try Q being false and you don't care what P is, and that will make the, the conjunction false, right? If you have P or Q, then like, like we had over here, this we had X, or Z, we were searching, we wanted, a, we wanted a situation where this one would be false. So to do that, we had to have both of these be false in order to have the or be false, yeah? And then with um, P equals true, how can you have P equals true be false? Either one has to be false and the other true, or the other true and the other false. And if you have a not, does not equal then they either both have to be true or they both have to be false, right? right in order for the not equal veil to be. And here's the here's the the really in, the most useful one. In order for P implies Q to be tr false, P has to be true and Q has to be false. And so you would search. So so that's how you search for counterexamples. Now, what do you think is what do you think is is easier to do? What, if you have a, an English expression, or if you have this, an English paragraph, and it's an argument, do you think it would be, what do you think your first, what's your, what do you think your heuristic should be? Try and find a counterexample. Yeah, I mean, do you think it's easier, because what if you try, what, what if you try to, what, yeah, what if you try to prove it, but, it's, but it turns out to not be true? Then you've spun your wheels yeah. a lot. But it's usually a lot easier to search for a counterexample, and then if you can convince yourself by searching for the counterexample that it's valid, then you can go ahead and try the proof. Do you see what I mean? Trying the proof in this example. Yeah, but but once you get to here, you have to have a counterexample. See you. Would See, you, would, you have, would you have stopped right there, or would you? Have no, no. You, you no. If you if you can start once you find a counterexample, you're done. You don't have to do any of that. I don't, I don't think it's realistic to think that while we're trying to work out a proof, we would have stopped at that line. I think we would have still looked. Still for looked. It. Yeah. Although the clue here was that we we were trying to get it to X or Z, and we could have get gotten this to imply not X or Z, which tells us that something's fishy here. Right. You well, know. No, the moral of the here. The no, 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 no. And you do the proof. No, the mor <laughs> The moral of the the moral of the story is to try to find a counterexample first. Okay. Of course, the very first thing you have to do is translate it. Translate right? and see if it sounds fishy. <laughs> translate it and see if it sounds fishy. Yeah, but sometimes these things are so complicated that it's hard to. It's hard to know if there is, you know, if there's a flaw in the if if there's a flaw in the logic. Okay. Um, now, this to, before we do the next one, the next one is, is is quite complicated. And before we do the next one, I want to to um, just remind us about equivalents versus equivalents. Sorry, equivalence versus inequivalence. <laughs> Remember our truth table. Remember. 
Remember our truth table for P equal equals Q? True, false, what was it? It's true, false, false, true. Okay? And so the meaning of equivalence is that P and Q are the same. That's how you remember this. P and Q. are the same. Right. And if we did it the other way, true, 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 false, false, true, false, false, this would be what? F, T, T, F. So the meaning of this is that P and Q are what? Correct. They are different. Actually, another way of thinking about this is as follows. Exactly one of these is true. By exactly one, I'm, we mean not both. Okay? Exactly one. So, so exactly, exactly. Because it, as opposed to at least one. Only one. As opposed to at least one is true. Are you with me? This means exactly, exactly one. Exactly one of P and Q of P and Q um, is true. Okay? So just think about this as we do this next sequence of arguments. Okay, now this next one, I warn you ahead of time, is a little complicated, but this is really a fun puzzle. Uh, have you guys, are you guys familiar with um, the Mer Merchant of Venice? Shakespeare? Yeah. Okay. I'm not a from the... Okay. Our author, our author has, has gone to this great piece of literature from Shakespeare and has extracted from it this great logical puzzle. Consider the following, which is a simplification of a situation in Shakespeare's Merchant of Venice. Okay, so Portia, here, now let me, here, let's do this. Portia has a, has, um, a gold casket and a silver casket. Okay, so here we go. Oh, I need, it's too bad I don't have a gold and a silver <laughs> pin. <laughs> okay, so here, this is gold. Here's a gold casket. Here's a silver. Silver casket, okay. And uh, a go so Portia has a gold casket and a silver casket and has placed a picture of herself in one of them. So inside, you know, we can't see what's inside. So the portrait, her portrait is in one of these. It could be in either. Okay. Well, now hold on. And on the caskets, she has written the following inscriptions. Gold. The portrait is not in here. So here is an inscription. The portrait is not in here, okay? So there it is, inscribed on there, okay? Silver, exactly one of these inscriptions is true. Who does this? <laughs> this sounds like a good idea. Exactly <laughs> one of these inscriptions is true. Okay, now, what does that mean? What, is, what do we mean exactly one of these is true? That means it's not equivalence. It means if, what this is stating is that either this is true, this statement is true, and this statement is false, or this statement is false, and this statement is true. But of course, if this statement is false, then it's not the case that exactly one of these inscriptions is true. <laughs> ah! <laughs> Are you with me? I don't trust it. 
So does everybody understand the, the, the setup? Her portrait's in one of these. There's an inscription here and an inscription here that says these things. Yeah? That inscription says those things. Okay, so here's the, here's the rest of the story. Portia explains to her suitor, you know what a suitor is, someone who wants yeah. to marry her, right? I mean, we don't use this language, these. this is Shakespearean, right? Oh, I have a suitor. <laughs> Portia explains to her suitor that each inscription may be true or false, but that she has placed her portrait in one of the caskets in a manner that is consistent with this truth or falsity of the inscriptions. <laughs> All right, you see what she's saying? She so someone the, 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 the she's she's very she's very she's a very she's a beautiful person. She has lots of suitors and in order to win their her hand, she tells them this. If, and, okay, so Portia explains to her suitor that each inscription, uh, maybe it's her suitor, it's singular, maybe there's just one, that each inscription may be true or false, but that she has placed her portrait in one of the caskets in a manner that is consistent with this truth or falsity of the inscriptions. If he can choose the casket with her portrait, she will marry him. Okay, so, ah, figure it out. Which one is and I'll marry you. I'll marry you. Okay. <laughs> okay. No, 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 no. We're not. This is not whether it's. This is not. No, this is not whether it's valid or not. Well, I think we should be able to figure out using formal methods which one it's in, and then we will get her hand in marriage. No, it's, it's not valid, but we want to find which one it's in. It's called. Okay. Okay. If he can choose the casket with her portrait, she will marry him. In those days, that's what suitors want. The problem for the suitor is to use the inscriptions, although they could be true or false, to determine which casket contains her portrait. Oh, there isn't. No, there, is. there is a way to figure out using logic. Yeah. See, everyone wants to do case analysis. Everybody wants to. We don't want to do case analysis. Wait, is, it, is it okay? Actually, the say it again. Is it okay that no, 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 no. We know that one of them, oh, she's... Portia is false. <laughs> no, no. We know, that, we know that one of them has. We know that one of them has. There's two situations in which the gold would be in it, and the other situations can't be done at all. Because assuming the gold one is true, then... The other one would technically be true. It would be impossible for the silver one to be true. true. So what you're, what you're doing is you're going through case analysis by saying, it, you, well, if this is true, then you, you're, you're doing case analysis. Yeah. And by case analysis, which, what did you figure out? It's in gold. You think it's in gold? Yeah. Assuming, okay, if silver is true, it's not valid, then, then the other one's false, meaning that it's in there. Yeah. And if they're both yeah, false, yeah. if they're both false, which is the only other way silver could be a uh, uh, um, it would have to be in gold as well. Silver says one of them is true. So right. silver would oh, have could be in gold. But silver cannot be true at the same time gold is true. True. Which is, which you just throw that out. So you only so have both of them being false or gold or being gold false. false. Which yeah. in both cases gold is false, meaning the portrait is yeah, okay, so okay, now you, you went through case analysis to figure out, that it was, but let's do it using our, let's, let's do it using our methods, okay? So here's, so here's what we have to do. Whoa. To begin solving the problem, we formalize it, okay? So we introduce four variables to stand for the primitive propositions. So our author has given us the letters to use. GC stands for the portrait is in the gold casket. SC stands for the portrait is in the silver casket. G stands for the portrait is not in the gold casket. So look, that's, that's, this, that's this statement, right? We're using the letter G to, rep, to be that this is this, this statement that's on the gold casket, which is the portrait is not in here. Are you with me? And then S is this 
statement right here. Exactly one of these inscriptions is true. All right, so this is the inscription on the silver casket. Okay, so now, can you tell me, uh, you, you guys, can you tell me what are the facts? Yeah. Using G, C, S, C, G, and S. Because what did we say? The, a Porsche explains to her suit that the inscriptions may be true or false, but she has placed a portrait, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so how do we, how do we state, what's our first fact? F, zero. What is our first fact? How do we say that the portrait is in one place? How, how do we say that it's a? How do we say that it's exact? Now, what, what did we? What did review? No, 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 no. In exactly one place, not at least one place. Oh, uh, G C O S C and um, and not parentheses G C and S C. Yeah. Yeah. G C or S C. G C or S C and not parentheses. G C and S C. So it it could be either. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, you're you're right. Yeah, yeah. You're. Be false. Yes, that that's 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 a kind of complicated way to do it. Can I can I get you? How about how about this? G C equals not S C. This is the portrait is in one place, right? Is that not the same? So if we go, Eagleville? yeah, it is. Oh, it is not Ecoville's. Yeah. Yeah. So, so GC, so, so this is the portrait. I mean, we, we, we have to assume this, right? True. Portrait, portrait um, is in one place. Is in one place. Okay. And what about... And how about uh, the relationship between G and GC? Duh. What about the relationship between G and GC? If G is true, then not GC. And so G implies not GC. How about equal veils? Yeah. Sure. So I, uh, that's the relationship between those two, right? And what about now? Here comes the tricky one. How about this one? What's the relationship between S and G? What does S equal What does S equal What is this saying? This is saying that what? What does S equal This is really cool. Uh, S, S equal What is this equivalent to saying? It's um, say, because it's talking G. about itself. Hold, hold, it's making, hold it. It's, it it's, it's saying something about itself and this. Yes. Oh, wait, 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 wait. No, no, no. Equal. Right. Which is also. Wait. Can you write it as an equal veils? With a not. With a not? Well, actually, that's one of our theorems, right? And then you have S yeah. equal That's one of our theorems. That's one of our theorems. Actually, in the same way that you can write this, GC is not. Write it just like the top one, because then you can. Then you have symmetry of equal veils, and then you have. G equals false. But right. Okay. Get that yeah. Okay. We can manipulate those. We can manipulate those however we want. Okay. It's time for us to quit. So what we're gonna do? Yeah. Isn't this? Doesn't time fly when you're having fun? Okay. Another cliffhanger. So what we'll do is we'll start right here at the beginning of class next time, and we'll carry this through and see how to analyze. So you know, I'm not I already know where the portrait is. Yeah, we all, do. We all, do. We all, do. We all do. All right. See you on Thursday.